This is Frank Islam, Chairman and CEO of FI Investment Group, your host of Washington Calling, where we interview leading voices from business and politics that impact you, the viewer. Today, we are fortunate to have a distinguished guest who had an inspiring career, not only as a deputy chief of staff of the Indian Army, but also as the Vice Chancellor of Aligarh Muslim University. Welcome to our show, General Shah. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, it's my pleasure, Dr. Frank Islam. Thank you very much. So I know you had a very distinguished career. Uh, uh, could you share with us uh, uh, your uh, experience with the United States Army? What have you learned? And what kind of things you nurture and nourish? Uh, what do you have learned as a, uh, in, the United, in the Indian Army? Well, um, Dr. Frank Islam, I uh, 40 years in the army. I joined as a very young boy of 15 and a half. The Indian army believes in catching, catching us young. And I got my commission when I was in my teens, 19 and a half, and then soldiered for uh, more than 40 years. Uh, during this time, uh, I did interact uh, 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 with a large number of, uh, of the other forces especially during my tenure in Saudi Arabia, where I was in close touch with the American, French, British, Chinese and the Russian uh, defense attaches. And I imbibed a lot from the American defense attaches. What I found was their, their capacity to do um, hard work right through. In fact, I tried to get them over for uh, a game of golf and other things. They just had no time. They were constantly <laughs> working and I think they were doing very well. So we settled on tennis and uh, tennis, uh, I was horrified when I asked when do we play tennis? This is during the lunch break. So uh, they are a very motivated and extremely hardworking lot. And I think they've done America proud. So as the Indian Army, I think we've done India proud. So I uh, had a most glorious uh, 40 years in the Army and um, uh, I imbibed a lot. Uh, the so, army is uh, India, right? Army is India. That's very well to put. Uh, 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 army uh, is India, and and it is the weapon of the last resort. And whenever uh, the country has problems, the army is called in to sort them out. Very good. Before I go uh, talk about your book, uh, which you just wrote, uh, talks about the Sarkari Musliman. I believe that's the name of the title. It has a it has uh, taken a, uh, a lot of, it has gotten a lot of media attention. So, and uh, I want you to tell us how, to the audience, how did they get a copy of this uh, book? But before I talk about the book, I wanted to, uh, you to tell the audience, um, should they go to the Indian Army? If so, what's your uh, message to them is? Uh, to, message to whom? Uh, to, to the people who wants to join the Indian Army. Okay. Uh, I think it is the best career option for a young Indian. Uh, the Army gives a whole sphere of activities. It gives uh, honor and, and uh, I think um, reasonably we are well paid with a lot of privileges. The Army have their separate cantonments where uh, life is extremely good. I mean, anybody who has been to an Army cantonment would vouch for the fact that they're the cleanest and the greenest parts of the city. So if you want, uh, now that we are uh, a technical army really, so it is. it calls for technical minded people. Uh, unlike me, I became a technical uh, after I joined. Uh, I had no other way but to become technical and learn the finer points of, of mathematics and calculus and everything else. It, it is an option, uh, it is a wonderful, career uh, with honor and glory and a lot of respect the army officers in all only the officers but defense personnel in india are the most respected and um, uh, they are really uh, honored by the citizens of the country very well said uh, also it allows the young people to give uh, to serve their country and to and also to learn being a discipline I want to talk to you about your book. Tell us a little bit about your book. Why did you write this book? Well, uh, see, I have uh, I've had experience in four fields. 
I was a soldier for 40 years. I started off as a camel driver in the regiment. I joined in a camel regiment, fought the 1971 war. Uh, then I was committed uh, in uh, for many, many years in countering insurgencies in North India and in Punjab. I also had the honor of commanding the forces which uh, quelled the riots in Gujarat in 2002. Then I retired as the Deputy Chief of Army Staff, where I was responsible for the modernization and the financial management of the Army. So I learned a lot from my 40 years, but that was not the end of it. Second hat I wore was as a judge in the Armed Forces Tribunal. So we uh, dispense justice. Uh, now people ask me, what is a general doing? Uh, does he uh, understand law? And I explained, well, I know military law. And I do know that justice is just common sense. If you apply your common sense, I think you can deliver uh, a fair judgment. After I finished with the Armed Forces Tribunal, in fact, I had to uh, uh, curtail my tenure because I went to Aligarh Muslim University as the Vice Chancellor. Now, the very fact that a general was picked up by the population to head the most populous, uh, the uh, populous and uh, one of the leading universities of the country shows how much of the world. trust is deposed uh, in right. uh, in army officers. They are there to resolve a lot of things. And then uh, after that, uh, I uh, thought that my experience needs to be put down in writing. Uh, I wanted to do something like uh, passing it on, passing on the knowledge which I had to the younger generation. Also, my aim was to uh well encourage young people to join up as uh, in the armed forces uh, the career had taken a little bit of beating in the last uh, few years because it was perceived that uh, the civil uh, occupations were paying better salaries but now it is uh, this uh, this has been corrected so i put it all together and wrote the book Very well. of course uh, the the title of the book uh, is um, a little, uh, you would say, one Intriguing. wonders why I named it. Uh, well, it, it is a catchy, catchy title. My publisher well, felt it was... It's also intriguing. Yeah. It is intriguing, no doubt. Uh, why I named... Right. Why I named it the Sarkari Musalman is that uh, people accuse me of being one. Uh, a Sarkari Musalman is a derogatory term given by the Muslim community to of their own community, generally um, uh, officers uh, who do not pander to illegitimate demands of the community. So if they come to you and ask for an illegitimate demand, they are told, look, everything has to be done according to the rules. Or they say, no point going to General Shah, he's a Sarkari Musliman. That means he's a government stooge. So uh, this was a title which, uh, uh, which uh, was at the back and I named it uh, the Sarkari Musalman. Very well said. Uh, how do the people get a copy? Is it available uh, in Amazon? Yes, it is in Amazon and it's available on Flipkart. So all you have to do is okay. uh, just get into Amazon and you'll get it. I hope the, uh, I, I want to tell the audience, go buy one of these, uh, uh, his book. And I had an opportunity to read it. It's a very well written, very eloquent and, and, and the thought will be great for the new next generations of the Indians and for that matter, for the whole world. I know you have been, you were Vice Chancellor of Aligarh Muslim University where when I met you, you had a very distinguished career. Tell us about your experience, your accomplishment, your success story at Aligarh Muslim University. Well, uh, this, uh, you know, being the head of Aligarh Muslim University was the most difficult which I was assigned. Uh, I took it as a challenge because uh, Aligarh Muslim University was one of the leading universities of the country, but because of indiscipline and lawlessness, its position had slipped. Uh, I wanted to restore the university to its former glory. Uh, in uh, just a few months after I took over, the American ambassador, Mr. Verma, uh, asked me, mm -hmm. what is the general doing in a university? So I told him, you should have asked General Eisenhower that question because I'll be uh, demoted <laughs> Uh, after he demoted uh, office as the uh, after the Second World War, he was president of a university for five years. President is equivalent to a vice chancellor in India. 
so it only shows the amount of trust the public has in uh, in military officers anyway we got down to business and uh, i can say with uh, with um, truthfully uh, and very proudly that in the last year of my um, uh, tenure in aligarh muslim university we were graded by times higher education london and us news and world report as the best university of the country now that is certainly a feather in the university's cap it was yes. because of teamwork uh, entirely uh, because of teamwork and the very fine research which we've done in um, i'll just uh, highlight what we did we are deeply involved in uh, project ganga and yamuna that was cleaning up the sacred rivers of india through a process uh, which is uh, does not require any energy it is uh, just uh, because of plant technology uh, we are we we are uh, using just plant technology to uh, clear the water clean the water it is not potable but it is good enough for agriculture and fish breeding uh, aspect which we concentrated on was uh, uh, nanotechnology for food for 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 nano fertilizers which do not pollute the environment and preservation of fruit and vegetables without refrigeration the third we uh, we concentrated upon was desalination of sea water of saline water now there are large areas in india especially in the desert where the water is saline we have through a process of nano filters we been able to uh, to perfect the technique of uh, desalination of sea water that would certainly be of interest to the to west asia where uh, desalination plants are gas guzzlers consume huge huge amounts of energy but if they adopt our process uh, it would be very very good and very very economical so because of these reasons because of there was no lawlessness in the university it did not close for a single day academic activity con- continued unhindered for 5 years and i think that was the reason why we came right on top amongst the universities of the country well what i think you did not mention and general shah uh, that you were able to nurture and nourish a relationship with this alumni and i'm one of them what's best in me i owe to aligarh muslim university its leader have shaped uh, the history of india and the destiny of india so and you were able to convince me my wife debi to give a uh, 2 million dollar to build frank and debi islam management complex and after that i gave another 500000 dollar to build frank and debi islam auditorium at the mass communication department at aligarh muslim university and you did a lot of other things that we take a lot of pride in it what you were able to work with the alumni and they all over the world so you're spreading the words of uh, words and, and wisdom and the values of, of uh, our founder sayed ahmed khan well uh, dr frank islam let me acknowledge your contribution towards your alma mater you have uh, on every occasion acknowledged what the university has done and we are very very proud of you and the fact that you uh, really opened your your purse strings and gave us 2 and 1/2 million dollars uh, for creating the frank and debi islam uh, college of Ma- uh, faculty of management uh, that is something which we are all very very it is very very proud it is the the best uh, structure in the university uh, yes. modern structure and uh, as i said Uh, you have contributed immensely uh, when i met you i uh, mentioned that you've been successful with what you imbibed from from amu and why don't you create 100 slums and yes. this um, management complex the frank and debi islam management complex will uh, nurture and train hundreds of potential frank slums and i'm sure that that they'll do a great job uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, we owe a lot to our alumni they have contributed yes. generously uh, this is something i learned from from uh, my visit to american universities where alumni are the standard bearers of uh, modernization uh, similarly the sayedna um, contributed very generously he gave us a thousand yes. computers and is restoring the old buildings uh, the same is uh, a lot of others the especially the alumni they have given jewelry which we auctioned so the alumni have been a source of strength uh, for the regeneration and rebirth of aligarh muslim university very well said now why has aligarh muslim university often been associated with the political 
controversy in the last five few years. Uh, are they guarded by ignorance? Are these people who create the unrest, their, their values and views are distorted and also desperate? Uh, are they tearing apart the harmonious fabric of a nation that has been a beacon of hope, beacon of democracy and secularism around the globe? Yes, uh, Aligarh Muslim University is the epitome of Ganga Jamna Tezib. That means the uh, inclusive character of our great country. But unfortunately, it has always been in the eye of the storm. It has been a punching bag for media, especially the electronic and the print media. Uh, anything that goes wrong, even a small amount, is blown out of all ocean. Uh, the good things, like I mentioned about the the uh, quality research we are doing, is not highlighted. Because of that, um, Aligarh Muslim University has always had a, a bad press uh, and now a bad electronic uh, representation. Things are blown out of proportion and uh, uh, people must realize that the university is contributing significantly towards the cohesion, towards the inclusive character of the country. They are thinking towards, as I mentioned, uh, the cleaning out of the sacred rivers. Vast tracts of it have been given to the university for cleaning and we will succeed. Uh, see, we are going to resolve the, the, the water problem. We are going to resolve the food problem. I did forget to mention that we are also harnessing solar power for automotive purposes. Yeah. And the next, next uh, solar driven car uh, will be the research of Aligarh Muslim University. This is going to be a great step forward. I wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about, because you are the product of Madarsa, and I have written several columns in Madarsa. Can you tell us the role of Madarsa in the 21st century and how it helps shape your own career? And, and they need to become a part of the 21st century workforce so they can create jobs and also uh, help the next generations to be part of the global economy. So can you, can you shed some light on it? Yes, Dr. Frank Islam, uh, let me tell you that I'm very proud to state that I started my education in a madarsa. When I was a little child, uh, I would go to the family madarsa and then I was entrusted to uh, Christian missionaries. So I imbibed the best of, uh, of uh, the education in a madarsa and in a modern secular school. Uh, I had a soft corner and I found that these institutions of learning uh, they are. They have a wide network all over the country, uh, but they've been unfairly demonized. Uh, the press yeah. has uh, painted them as factories of uh, terror, terrorism, and uh, this is very unfair criticism. Yes, I do realize that uh, the students who are pass outs of these madrasas are ill-equipped to uh, to get proper occupations. Uh, they are only taught Arabic and Urdu. I think uh, madrasas need to diversify and become normal schools like uh, uh, Christian seminaries where yes. uh, the priests are not only given uh, education or the, the clergymen are not only given education in Christianity but other religions plus uh, they, they do doctorates, they are given PhDs, they earn their PhDs while they are there. So we need to reform madrasas urgently. Uh, we need to uh, indicate. We need to give the madrasa students an opportunity to vie for uh, proper occupations. Uh, after all, how many imams and mozins can the country absorb? So we started. <laughs> uh, I went to the. I went to the uh, to the um, uh, seminaries of uh, madrasas India and tried to uh, meet and convince the the higher ups. Uh, to to diversify and change when they did not uh, when the bottom up approach or the top down approach did not work we started the approach uh, what we did we in Aligarh Muslim University we started a course called the bridge course right. where we train right. uh, students every year uh, 75 boys and 25 girls it is called the bridge course because it's the bridge, it is the connection between a madrasa education and modern secular education. In the bridge course, we give a, a concentrated capsule of English, uh, computers and social sciences. 
And let me tell you that we've had 100% success rate in the pass out from the bridge course on their own merit. They have got admission in leading you of the country through open competitive examinations in law, humanities, and you'll be surprised, some in English honors. So students have immense capability imbibing knowledge. They only have to be shown the correct path and the time is now. We have got to change. The madrasas have got to modernize and prepare their students uh, for the, for, I mean, it's not only religious education, it is the to earn a decent bread and butter. And that is what we should look exactly. at. Exactly. And part of the part of the 21st century workforce and global economy. I have only uh, one minute left. What's your future plan in terms of the education front that can help shape the next generation of Indians? I know you have been a spokesperson for education that empowers the mind and uplifts the soul. And education is the bridge to the future and it's an opportunity creators. And we need to make sure that people, especially in the minority community, get a good education. How do you go about empowering them with education? Because this is the way to get them out of the poverty. Well, uh, I know you had a long imbibes... passion and commitment to education. Go ahead. That's right. Dr. Frank is Islam. I got the best education which any uh, young person can hope for. I went to a modern secular school. Uh, I imbibe a lot. Uh, my brothers too did the same. Uh, I've always said that if you have, uh, what we need to do is have a strong foundation. If the foundation is strong, balls will be rebuilt, provided the foundation is strong. Uh, so in pursuance of that, uh, we uh, we felt that the crying need of the minority community and the, the unprivileged lot needed good schooling. We started a school for refugee children in uh, uh, Muzaffar Nagar. Uh, it is called the Sir Sayyid National School, Muzaffar Nagar. It's in a village called Jwala, where we have got at the moment about 350 uh, students. Uh, what is important is that it is a secular school. Uh, all children of all communities are admitted to that school and there was initial hesitation of the majority community coming in and taking admissions, but that has been uh, that has been overcome. And uh, we have got now uh, several minority uh, majority uh, students. The press asked them, uh, don't you feel fear? They said, no. The, then they asked, why did you come to the school? Well, they said, because it is the best school in the district. So in the same way, we have uh, raised two more schools. One is in Sardana, that is the in the building in which I was raised as a young child. The family decided to, to give it to the Sarsayad Education Foundation, and we've made a school there. And the third school is in Saharanpur. We want to create or want to establish uh, schools up to class 12 in all areas where there's a sizable minority population. And that right. would empower the minority students. It can be anybody uh, also of the majority community, empower them to admission in leading institutions of higher learning. Uh, it would empower, it would equip them to qualify for IIT, for IIM, for the National Defense Academy. I think that is my mission uh, henceforth. Thank you very much, uh, General Shah. Uh, you mentioned your brother, Nasiruddin Shah, who happens to be an Aligarian, and he went to school. I think he went about the same time that I was probably a student. Uh, what a wonderful actor he is. We owe him a sense of gratitude uh, for what he has done for India and for, the, for that matter, uh, and for the whole world. So thank you very much. Uh, your family is a distinguished family. I sh you should continue to render your services to India and to the world. And you have a lot to give and you, you will be a difference maker. And thank you very much for coming. This is Frank Islam wishing you a great week and thank you for watching.